How are y'all doing? I'm Donald Sawyer. I'm a writer and a speaker. And when it comes to being an American entrepreneur, the first thing that comes to my mind is inspiration. What inspires you? You know, what's your why? Why do you want to be an entrepreneur? Because if you look throughout history, for me, all the great men, all the revered, honored, celebrated men and women in our history were innovators. They created, they had an idea for a product or for a service. And they had a vision for it. They wanted to change lives. They wanted to impact. They wanted to do something greater than themselves. They wanted to accomplish something that was bigger than themselves. And I always go back to inspiration. You know, you can also look at it as what what do you want to benefit people with? You know, how do you want to solve a problem? You know, one thing that comes to my mind that's so popular with everybody is Facebook. You think about Mark Zuckerberg in his dorm room. When all the other kids are out partying and socializing and doing all those types of things, he was in his dorm room, focused, locked in. Like, you know, I see opportunity here. I see a void. There's something missing with the social order in this institution. And I feel like I can create something that will add value. He was inspired. And usually, if you look at things, and usually if you look at situations and new products and new services, usually it's a problem or the lack of something that inspires someone. So for me, as a writer, what inspired me was the same thing. I looked around at all the different books out there, business books, you know, self-improvement books, all those types of things. And I looked at the fact of, uh, I grew up, I grew up reading. My mom read to me every night when I was a child. And she read fiction to me. She read books like Mother Goose, The Three Little Pigs, Humpty Dumpty, you know, all those types of things. What it was for me, it was, it was fun, first and foremost, it was really fun, but what I always came across with was every story had a moral. Every story had a lesson. Amidst all the fun and games and the silly things that went on, it always had a lesson. You could even take the tortoise and the hare. There's always with every story a message that the author or writer wants to convey to people. There's something that he wants to bring to their awareness. There's something that he wants them to be conscious of. So that's inspiration. You look at the tortoise and the hare. You know, it's subjective. You may have your own interpretation of it, but what it always spoke to me was you have to be patient. More so, you can't get cocky. The moment you feel like, okay, I got this race won, I got the competition beat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my foot off the gas. That's when you're going to lose. They're going to creep back behind you slowly because you're getting too cocky. And, 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 you know, my mom read that story to me when I had to be in all of six or seven. I probably was younger than that, to be honest with you. But it stuck with me. It reminded me to be humble. See, even when I'm winning, even if I'm dominating the people around me, Never get too comfortable because once you get comfortable, it's over. You're going to lose. It's proven throughout history. But back to me as a writer, what I saw, I was inspired by my daughter. You know, there's a lot of things in the world when it comes to writing that people can take hold of and use as, as, as food for thought. But for me, it was my daughter. When she was a year old, me and my wife started noticing her dancing. Just anytime she would hear music on the radio 
on YouTube, you know, on TV. If we were out somewhere going past a bar or something and they played music, she was just locked in and she was just, she would be dancing and dancing. And I said, man, I said, it just really inspired me for her to be so young and so passionate. But what I did was I looked at that and I said, oh, okay, you know what? I've loved reading my whole life. Why not I? Why not? Why is it? Why can't I write a book? Why not? Let's see what happens. But what I did was I also used my own experiences with the book. Before I go too far ahead, this is the book. It's called Dance Up Out of Here. The plot of the book is this. It's a biracial teenager living in New York. She lives with foster parents. She's adopted. She's never met her parents before. They're wealthy. I mean, they're wealthy like, like, you know, millions and millions and millions wealthy. She wants for nothing. But see, the thing is, they want her to be a pianist. They want her to be a trained classical piano player. And from the time she's nine years old, all she wants to do is dance. That's all she wants to do. But she's scared. Because she understands that if she goes against the grain, they'll take her back to the orphanage like that. So the message I wanted to convey early on was the fear. Was that, especially being an entrepreneur, there's always an initial fear of some kind. Whether it's a fear of your product being rejected, a fear of your service not being received well, or it could be the opposite. It could be a fear of you being average for the rest of your life. It could be a fear that you're going to be an employee when you wake up at 50 years old. And you think at it like, oh, what did I do with my life? Why am I in this position? That's also a fear. A lot of people have a fear to go for their dreams, to go for what they see in their head. They're scared. So the character LaRue, she goes to that fear because she doesn't want to go back to the life she had before. But what happens is, over years and years and years of not acting on her vision, years of not acting on her dream and her passion and her talent, it builds up and festers and she gets angry. And one day she snaps. She just leaves the home. But she has no close friends. She has no other close family around. So she goes to the streets. So the whole point of the book is she goes through homelessness and dances on the street corner on her journey to become self-sufficient, on her journey to be plucked from obscurity and to travel and to be discovered by great people for her dancing ability. But she endures cold nights on the streets of New York to get to that point. The message I wanted to convey was with entrepreneurship, you have to take a risk. If you are working a day job, at some point, you're going to have to leave your familiar territory and you're going to have to go into a world of uncertainty. But you'll be free to go after your goal. And it works the same thing with anything else in life. If there's something you really, 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 really want to do, if you jump up out the bed and it's on your mind, you're going to have to give up something to have time to go chase that. That's what I wanted to convey with Dance Up Out of Here. That was my inspiration, was going for my goal. And for me, it's impacting lives in a positive manner because I have a history of substance abuse. I have a history of alcoholism. After high school, instead of going to college, I went right, I went right to a juvenile prison. I put myself through a lot of hard times in life and I overcome that. I picked myself up out of the hole. And now I have a clear vision for what I want to do. I'm also going through elementary schools and I'm speaking. And as of right now, I'm in the process of getting certificates to be a recovery coach to help counsel people going through addiction. Because I too went through addiction. I'm tying in the writing and the speaking to become a recovery coach. Be inspired. 